What's going on guys? CrossFit Games 2022 is wrapped. Medeiros brought it home, Tia brought it home, but are we surprised? This video has nothing to do about recapping the CrossFit Games, but actually how to tackle your off-season training to get ready for the CrossFit Open, and if you're trying to advance on the semifinals, all that good stuff. So today I'll be covering exactly what we do with our athletes at ksquarefitness.com, how to tackle your weaknesses, how to program this upcoming off season. We're gonna go over all that in great, detail, in great detail. Let's roll the intro. All right guys, it's Kevin Andres, owner of K-Squared Fitness. And if you guys are new around here, be sure to like this video and comment down below with your biggest takeaway because I'm gonna cover a lot of valuable tips so that you can crush this off season for the CrossFit Open coming up next early year. But let's get into it guys. So for most of us, if, we, if we're being realistic here on this channel, our CrossFit, our CrossFit season didn't just end. We're not the CrossFit Games level. You might've finished at the CrossFit Open or even at semifinals. So you've already been training towards the CrossFit Open. But I like to use the CrossFit game since that is the benchmark of what we are trying to accomplish uh, on, on some level. Some of your goals might be different, but that is the standard. And you know, we got exposed to a lot of great elements of fitness as we always do. Gymnastics, pure strength with that sandbag. You know, over the years, it seemed like you had to be a true barbell specialist to compete in the sport. And I just love that they brought it back to where I feel like it was really well balanced. I'm not saying that you can't have barbells and get really, really strong. I think that needs to be a part of it, but I felt like over the years it was getting pretty biased. And when I got started with CrossFit back in early 2010, 11, that area, it was a lot more well-rounded fitness. And I really think that this CrossFit game season was exactly that, a true testament of everything. Even with the jerks overhead, you had to, get good conditioning with the run first. I love that that was a two-part score as well. So you had to run fast and then lift heavy. That was just awesome. But as we look at this off season, I'm gonna to try to spark some insight in between the ears of what's going on is gymnastics, mobility. Are you moving well? What does your engine look like? Do you need to get stronger? Do you need to focus on Olympic lifting or just mental toughness? So let's get straight into it. And the first thing that I do with all of our athletes in this off season is we have to increase your aerobic capacity, your ability to just keep on going, better endurance. And I wanna give you an example of two different athletes. Let's pretend that athlete A and athlete B are both doing a 15 minute AMRAP and athlete A has a heart rate of 165, athlete B has a heart rate of 145, but athlete B actually wins, does more rounds and reps and has a lower heart rate question is, is who is fitter? Athlete B with the lower heart rate is fitter because he has a better aerobic capacity. He's able to put more work out by keeping his heart rate lower. So in the off season, and it's a great time to improve your endurance because I say this with an asterisk, you're not gonna get better at CrossFit by just doing more CrossFit workouts. What I mean by that is you have to spend time now on longer, slower distance, rowing, biking, running intervals so that you can improve your aerobic capacity so you can increase your VO2 max. 80% of your training should probably be endurance. 20% should be high intensity intervals when we're talking about endurance stuff. So I want you to focus on improving your aerobic engine. One thing that is also a great opportunity to address is are you moving well? Are you taking your recovery seriously? Do you have a mobility protocol? Are you following some type of daily mobility flow to improve your positioning? Because if you can get into a better positioning, better position, you're gonna move weight a lot more efficient because you're gonna get into a stack position. So that is one thing that I'll highly address. Mobility and improving your endurance. Little shameful, unshameful plug right here. Within our programming at ksquaredfitness.com, we offer not only lots of different programs, gymnastics, strength, Olympic lifting, strength conditioning, GPP, general fitness programming, all that good stuff, but we also have a 15 minute daily mobility flow. You know, for years I tried GoWad, RomWad, 
Kelly Starrett taught me a lot. All those people taught me a lot, but one thing that I've done over the past couple of years is a lot of in range of motion, pails and rails type stuff where I'm actually working on improving the strength of my in range as opposed to just camping out into position and stretching. Now, I still love doing that because it helps get into a restorative state and just breathing and then sinking down into the muscle tissue. But this in range of motion stuff has been fantastic for improving my strength in the in range position. Let's keep it rolling. So we talked about the importance of mobility recovery, talked about improving your aerobic capacity. The next thing I want to talk about is improving your overall strength. So if we use the last example on heart rate, let's use another example on the CrossFit workout, Diane, 2159 deadlifts and um, handstand pushups. Fellas got to use 225, ladies got to use 155. And if we have athlete A who has a deadlift of 450 and athlete B who has a deadlift of 365, within that work capacity that's required of that workout, who is most likely going to have a better time with that workout? Probably athlete A because they're only lifting 50% of their max, max deadlift. So if we can increase our strength, our overall strength, as you get into more conditioning work later in the season, closer to the open, if you're stronger, the barbell is going to feel a lot lighter. If you are really gotten strong at strict pull-ups and strict pulling and strict dips, once you start to kip, that's going to feel a lot better. A lot better. I've always said that strength is the price of admission. The stronger you are, the easier all these other movement and modalities are going to feel because they're not as taxing on you. You're not working your, your higher rep threshold. Another thing to talk about is Olympic lifting. Now, if you're newer to the sport of CrossFit, this might be a good time to really get dialed in and focus on Olympic lifting to truly commit to learning the movement, getting into the prop positioning, seeing what it feels like to have your eye, elbows high and outside. What does a quick turnover even mean? Can you get into a good overhead squat? If these are all things that are new-ish to you, then getting dedicated to a true Olympic lifting program. We have them at caseworkfitness.com. I don't have a dedicated page for it yet, but if you put in the comments down below, we can have a conversation and I can help you out with that. But if that's new to you, now is a good time to get plugged into that. Big believer that Olympic lifting is an entire sport because it is Olympic. The Olympics focus on the clean and jerk and the snatch, just two skills, right? So to get good at that, that's dedicating a whole lot of time for that. And we're not Olympic lifters, we are CrossFitters. So to be good at Olympic lifting, my, I'm very biased towards this because I, I also love gymnastics. My, my theory is Olympic lifting is such a small part of the sport, so important because it'll help you move better and have better positioning and everything else that we do. I'm not arguing against that. I'm just saying that to get really, really, really good at Olympic lifting, that's a lot more challenging than it is to get really good at fitness and being pretty okay at Olympic lifting. Now, if that's your strength and you totally disagree with me, then the next thing that I'll talk about is the gymnastics and we'll see how you, you hold up there. So one thing that I also encourage you that if you can focus on this off season in improving your core strength and your gymnastics abilities, it's gonna help everything else because I did an experiment years ago. I kept going cycle after cycle after cycle and I wasn't getting any stronger. My back squat was stuck at 425. My front squat was stuck at like, I think it was 315 or 325, something like that. And then I got back into my gymnastics training, which is what I focused on after my athletic career basketball. I took gymnastics for several years and that gave me a really good foundation. Then I got exposed to CrossFit and followed a lot of great programs, had some good coaches, and years later I got into my own stuff. But when I started incorporating my gymnastics again, my numbers went through the roof. Somehow I ended up deadlifting 510 pounds. My front squat went up to 385. My back squat went, went up. I think I misspoke. I used to have a 375 or something like that back squat and then it jumped up to 425. All I'm getting at is that having gymnastics be a part of your program, it's going to improve your core strength. It's going to improve your positioning because, and that's going to overall help you get into a better positioning. And if you're in better positioning, you're going to be stronger, excuse me, stronger, more stacked and more efficient when it comes to those movements. So I've also got two different gymnastic style programs within our website. I've got a gymnastic strength program 
and I've got a gymnastics conditioning program. You already know how I feel about those. Focus on strength first and then get plugged into the gymnastics engine. More details on that down in the description below, but that's a lot of different stuff. We talked about mobility, we talked about engine, strength training, Olympic lifting, gymnastics. Now I wanna encourage you and give you some insight on exactly what it is that we do at ksquaredfitness.com over these next two weeks and piecing it all together. So throughout the year within our training programs, we offer a lot of detailed structure progressions and I ask a lot of you as an athlete to know your body, know what you're capable of. If I said, what's your max front squat? What's your five rep max front squat? What's your mile time? What's your 2K time? What's your Jackie time? All these different benchmark workouts I'd like for you to know because within our programming, I give percentage-based stuff. I want you to run fast, and your fast pace needs to be relative to you. Or if I say 70% for X amount of reps of your back squat, it needs to be relative to you so that we are programming to what's best for you so that we can progress over the training cycle. So at K-Squared Fitness, our athletes, over the next two weeks, we're going to be going through baseline testing, and that is simply put, as if it's been a while, we're just trying to get updated numbers. We're going to test back squat, overhead squat, deadlift, uh, snatch, clean, 2K row, one mile, you know, all these different tests over the next two weeks so that we have that data collected and we'll use that to kick us off into our first training cycle for the CrossFit season, which I'm pumped about. So we're just using this time to gather data, gather data, get updated numbers, and then on cycle one, we'll kick we'll hit the ground running. And I just want to give you an inside look to what a training cycle looks like with us. By the way, if you haven't already subscribed to this video or to our channel or like this video and you're still sticking around, smash that button right quick. Let's get into it. So a training cycle for us is typically six to eight weeks long. And at the beginning of the training cycle, we're going to test. We'll go through all these different tests. What doesn't, what gets tested gets measured. So the first thing we're going to do is test. And then we will follow progressive overload training. So we keep things super simple. Years ago, I tried to really overcomplicate things. And I'm a full believer in that you're going to have the most success in the program that you actually follow versus the program that is outrageously crazy, really, really challenging. Not that simple means easy. I'm just saying that if the one that you are able to do and follow and execute well is the one that you're going to have the most success with. So six to eight weeks test. And then throughout the next five to seven weeks, we will gradually increase volume, increase intensity, change the different uh, modalities of fitness that we'll be testing. And then right before our retest week, we'll have a deload week to where we drop the volume, we drop the intensity, so we can have our body a chance for our CNS, our nervous system to recover, and then we'll retest that data. And what we're looking for is over that course of the cycle is, we're trying to learn what it feels like to work on a specific set of skills and gather data and collect that within our, within our mind so we know that we're capable of and we're pushing those limits. And then when we retest, you get a little bit of positive feedback. I worked really hard on this and now I am 20 seconds faster on this test or whatever the case may be based off what we're testing. But that is an inside look of what it is like to be a part of the K-Squared Fitness team. I tried to give you an inside scoop of what to do with your off-season training. We talked about the importance of mobility, having a strong engine, improving your strength, getting stronger at Olympic lifting and gymnastics and improving your core strength. Then I tried to tell you how to piece it all together. And I encourage you, if you're not already plugged into some type of coaching platform, there's tons of great coaches out there, lots of good programs. Like I said, the one that you're gonna have the most success with is the one that you commit to, the one that you can have a relationship with your coach. And everyone that joins the K-Squared Fitness team, the first thing that we do in your first week, which is free by the way, first week is free, we'll get on a kickoff call together so that I can find out exactly what you're trying to accomplish. What are your goals? What areas of opportunity do you have? What are your weaknesses? What's your life like? How does your training schedule work? What equipment do you have available? Where are you training? All these different things because as a coach, I care about your success and that's all I want for you. If you guys wanna join the team, be a part of K-Squared Fitness, train hard and see progress and have a blast training. You guys click the link down below. I hope to see you on the other side. If you haven't already, like this video, comment down below, 
Spread the word about K-Squared Fitness because we're coming for you.